Good morning, Refuge. We are sure glad to see you on Facebook with us this morning. Cannot wait till we can be together again. Um, but until then, we're going to keep rocking and rolling here on Facebook. So let's get ready to worship. Grab your uh, cyber coffee and cyber donuts, and let's get this morning started right. Let's do it. Oh, you're calling me over, you're pulling me close, we love you surround me, you're giving me hope, yeah, yeah, you're taking me deeper, you're making me Come and die by 
grace now I will come Take this life, take your life Sin has lost its power Death has lost its king From the grave you've risen Victoriously Into marvelous light I'm running Out of darkness, out of shame By the cross you are the truth You are the life, you are the way Dead heart now is beating, my deepest stains now clean. Your breath fills up my lungs, now I'm free, now I'm free. My dead heart now is beating, my deepest stains now clean. Your breath fills up my lungs. Sin has lost its power, death has lost its sting. From the grave you risen, victoriously into marvelous light. I'm running out of darkness, out of shame. By the cross you are the truth, you are the light. To marvelous God, I'm running out of darkness, out of shame. By the cross, you are the truth, you are the life, you are the way. Lift my hands and spin around, see the light that I have found. For the marvelous light, marvelous light. Lift my hands and spin around See the light that I have found Oh, the marvelous light, marvelous light Sin has lost Sin has lost its power Death has lost its meaning From the grave you've risen Victoriously into marvelous light I'm running out of darkness, out of shame By the cross you are the truth, you are the life, you are the way Into marvelous light I'm running out of darkness, out of shame you are the truth, you are the light, you are the way. Good morning, Refuge. And we're glad that you tuned in with us today. Just want to encourage you to continue to lift each other up in the comment section below as you're listening to the sermon. We also are going to be live on Wednesday nights for Build on Travis J. Zachary's page that's from 7 to 8. We will also still be having Back to Basics with Brad Keeling. So if you need the information, get a hold of one of us and we'll get you the code so you can get on to have that meeting with him. We still have, uh, <clears throat> my phone number is 806-448-0640. If you're going to tithe and you have cash or checks, somebody will be out between 2 and 4 today to pick those up. And you can also give on our website at lubbockrefuge.com. Go to the Give tab, and it'll show you how to take care of it on there. And we have a Venmo at Lubbock Refuge. So we'd like to thank everybody that's been able to continue to tithe during this time. We really appreciate it. And we also understand if you're having a rough time, we're lifting you all up in our prayers. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for what you're doing here at the Refuge and the people. 
Lord, I just ask that you continue to strengthen us and encourage us in this time. Lift us up. Love us like only you can, Lord. I just pray that you take the tithe and offering as a gift of our worship. And I ask all these things in your name. Amen. Scripture focus this morning comes out of 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 through 15. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. 
but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. These are the words of the Lord. It will be right when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel Will I dance for you, Jesus Or in all of you be still Will I stand in your presence to my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah, will I be able to speak it all, I can only imagine, I can only imagine, I can only imagine. When that day comes and I find myself standing in the sun, I can only imagine when all I will do is forever, forever worship you. Lord, we thank you for the refuge, Lord, that uh, 
Times may look a little different, Lord, but we can still worship you, Lord. We just ask that you can you would continue to work in our lives, continue to work in our hearts, help us to to seek you out, Lord, to to grow more with you, to fall more in love with you. And this morning, we just ask that you be with Pastor Allen as he speaks. Let the words be yours, Lord. Bless this time, bless the refuge. We love you. We praise you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Excited to be here with you uh, virtually. Uh, we're, we're looking forward to the day and the, the time when we can all be together again. And uh, just, man, we don't even know what that's going to look like, but we know it's going to be good. And we're excited about that. Just to give you a little backdrop, background, this is the sixth Sunday of the Easter season. Uh, we are 36 days removed from the resurrection of Christ. 14 days. Yet, until we will celebrate the giving of the Holy Spirit in Pentecost. We're going to be this morning, we're going to be in the book of John. It's in chapter 14. We're going to be looking at verses 15 through 21. I won't be able to get to all of them, but I do want to share with you, want to, want to let you know that John is by far probably my favorite text. It holds all of my very favorite uh, portions, those those things, those things that I've actually uh, driven stakes in, those, those portions of Scripture that, that keep me founded and solid, those things that I lean on in the worst of times. It's in the first chapter of John that we're told that He, the Christ, became flesh and dwelt with them for a season. That I remember, I remember the day when that, that text became true to me and the Word became flesh. And today, the Word continues to be flesh. The Word is flesh in you. You're sitting out there in virtual land, if you will. But I tell you that the Word continues to be flesh, continues to dwell with us. It's in the book of John that uh, John the Baptist says, to make the way straight by which he can come. I, again, I remember the day when that was a profound truth in my life, that it wasn't my job. It wasn't my assignment. It wasn't for me to drag you kicking and screaming to the cross. But instead, through his love to make the way straight so that he, Christ, might come to you. That's your assignment as well as the word has become flesh and dwells in you today. Your assignment is to make the way straight. For your friends, for your family, for all those who are important to you. I, I can tell you that doing this today on, on, uh, on video, the hardest thing for me is, is not to walk. I have in my mind, I have been to the mic stand and I've been near the piano. It's really, this is a difficult thing. So um, when we all get back together, I, I'm going to run. I, I think I'm just going to take off. This morning, we're going to be again in the book of John. Let me read to you verse 15. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it does not see him or know him. But you know him, because he abides with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. After a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you will also live. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Verse 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will disclose myself to him. Again, today being the sixth Sunday of Easter, this we are removed from the Easter event, the, the crucifixion and the resurrection. And we are headed to the giving of the Holy Spirit. 
But this portion, actually not just chapter 14, but on through 17, it's known, we, we recognize it as a farewell discourse. As Christ is speaking to his disciples, I, I want you for a moment to put yourself in the disciples' place. They had the Christ. They'd walked with him for three years. And then he died. I guess you could say they didn't have him. Uh, then they get the report that his body's been stolen. So not only, not only is he lost to them, he is lost away from them. And then he shows back up in their midst. He makes his presence known. And now, Christ is saying that he's going to leave again. Imagine the roller coaster that they are on. Imagine the emotion that they're experiencing. Imagine, if you will, just what they were trying to get their head around. Uh, this portion of text, not just chapter 14, but on through 17, Christ is doing what I think is probably the most important thing, is that he is trying to put them at ease trying to put his disciples at rest, affording them an opportunity, if you will, to survive this moment. The first line of our text today, again, meant to bring peace, meant to bring ease to his disciples has done the exact opposite for us, for the church. It says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love me. The struggle we have today is with the word if. If. The church of my past, they took that if and they made it a, a, a proof text, if you will. Prove you love me. Keep my commandments. It'd be like for my wife to say, if you love me, you would get tickets and take me to Hawaii. Okay, I don't love you. That's funny right there. I don't know if y'all got it or not. If you love me, prove it to me. Keep my commandments. This is, this is one of the biggest conflicts we have in the church today. And that is the struggle between the law and grace. If you love me, keep my commandments. The law kills. Grace gives life. But if that, if that prove it to me text if that's the gospel, it's ne neither full nor free. It's earned and it's measured. And that's not the gospel that Jesus taught. A second thought on this word, if, implies I don't know. Now, much like the first, again, it requires um, a proof, if you will, but it's not as forceful. We do it when we as the church... When we take the word of God and we use it as a measuring tool for our neighbor, we call it fruit inspector. But I need to remind you that the scripture, the word of God, was never meant to be a magnifying glass by which you measure your neighbor. It's just not that way. It never was that way. It's not intended to be that way. What it is, is the word of God is a mirror by which we look at ourselves. We actually take the word of God and we look at Jesus and then we look at ourselves and we repent of the difference. If you love me, I don't know. All it really does is creates a doubt in the mind of the believer. There's a third application on this word if and it's actually the one that I want to share with you today. And it's, it's the word that says because. If you love me, because you love me, it is a natural response that you will keep my commandments. 
Okay, I, I need to stop you right there because I, 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 see, I see your heads move. And see, what you're doing is you're taking that and you ran right back to the law. That's not what it's saying. It's, it's not about the commandments being a, a do this and don't do that list. I guess we could ask the question, what are the commandments? We've taken those and we've made it a, a self-defeating gospel. Because you and I both know that we really stink when it comes to performing in the church. They asked Jesus, they actually said, which are the greatest of the commandments? He said, he said there are two. There is love God with all of your heart, body, soul, mind, spirit. Love your neighbor as yourself. He said, actually, in this, these two, the whole of the gospel, or the whole of the law and the prophets is contained. Love God and love yourself. Let's do some math. Ready? This is math. I like math. Okay. Get your piece of paper out. Ready? If A equals B and B equals 3, does A equal 3? It does. You see, if A equals B and B equals 3, then because A equals B, we know that A equals 3 because B equals 3. If A equals B and B equals 3, it's math. It's simple. It's, it's a proof text, if you will. So let's do that with this text. If you love me, keep my commandments. Okay. What are your commandments? Love God and love others. Okay. Let's put it in the equation. If you love me, You'll not only love God, but you'll love others. That is the gospel. It's, it's, it's no more complicated than that. When we, when, we try to, when we try to make it hard, all we're, do, all we're doing, you know what? I can give you a list of things that you should do. And you know what that list of things are? It are things that I can do, but I won't give you a list of things I can't do. I'll just give you a list of things I can do. If you love me, you'll not only love God, but you'll love others. But it, it actually gets better after this. Wait, no, let me, let me share this with you. I, I like this text, so I, I pulled it out. It's uh, 2 John chapter 1, verse 6. Listen to this. This is, again, the Apostle John writing. And this is love. That we walk in obedience to his commands. As you have heard from the beginning, his command is that we walk in love. Do you, do you, see, the, do you see the A equals B and B equals 3, so A equals 3? Do you see the equation in that? And this is love, that we walk in obedience to his commands. As you have heard from the beginning, his commands is that you walk in love. And this is love, that you walk in love. If you love me, you must love others. This is actually where it gets better. Verse 16, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. Now there's two words in that text, and it's, it's just the way I study gospel. Two words in that text that I, I want to bring to your attention. And the first one is the first word, and. Uh, it, it took me back to my childhood. I, I remember Saturday morning, uh, we, would, we would get up early and we'd, we'd watch cartoons. But they, they slipped school in on us and they would, they would bring little. They had a word. All I remember is a song. Conjunction, junction. What's your function? Hooking up words and phrases and clauses. And was one of those. You see, in this, Christ has taken, and he's taken this phrase and he's attached it to, he's hooked it to, if you will, the previous statement. 
If you love me, you will love others. And I will speak to the Father. And he will send you another helper. In that, I, I have to go back and I have to take again the mirror, which is the word of God, and look at myself. And I do realize that there are some people that I guess are hard to love. <laughs> There's some people it's hard to even be nice to. There are some people that I can't. I mean, I look at it, and then the way I treat them, and I walk away, and I come back to this text, and I say to myself, if I truly loved him, I would love my neighbor. I would love that individual. And it's just not in me to do so. But Christ gives us a promise. He says, and... I will pray to the Father, and he will send another helper who will be with you forever. That brings us to a second word in this text, another. He says, I will pray to the Father, and he will send another helper. Another is, is another is another. <laughs> another is a, another word that we sometimes struggle with. If, if I go to my favorite place of fine dining, Buffalo Wild Wings, it's the best. We, we used to go there at least once a week. We tried to. Uh, I went sometimes after. After we all went, I'd go back and get more. But let's say I'm at Buffalo Wild Wings and I'm enjoying my Caribbean jerk uh, boneless wings with fries and cheese. I, I prefer to have the queso cheese and a Coke. And the waitress, we have a little waitress who has served us for years. And she comes along and she says, Alan, can I get you another drink? And I say, yes, yes, I'd love another drink. And she comes back with a Dr. Pepper. Well, Dr. Pepper's not another for me. That may be another for Pastor Travis. But Dr. Pepper is something totally different. You see, if I'm going to have another drink, another is a Coke. That's the actual application of this word, the application of this word. It's not that I will send you a different helper. But what he's saying is that I will send you another helper. A helper just like myself. I will send you not just another helper. But this one will be better. It won't just be God with us. It will be God in us. You got to remember that the disciples in this in this roller coaster of emotion that they were caught in no no different from the roller coaster that we're caught in today. You see the church is open no the church is closed. We're coming back no we're not coming back. When are we coming back? We don't know if we're coming back. Are we going to get to come back? Will it be different? Will it be the same? How's it how's it going to look? What are we going to we don't know. We don't know. The disciples were very much in the same. They, Christ was there and he was gone and he was back and now he's leaving again. And, and what, what are we going to do? And, and Jesus is making that very, very pointed application. I will pray to the Father and he will send another just like me. He will send another of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit. We, we have failed in the church in that we have made the Holy Spirit a byproduct. We have made the Holy Spirit less than God. And, and oh God, forgive us. Forgive us. Because he's not different. He is the same. As he dwells with me and he dwells with you, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, that's the same spirit that dwells in you today. That's the same spirit that allows you to love others as yourself. That's the same spirit that assures you that if you love God, the helper is coming. I want to move down if I can. I just, uh, it's, it's hard to see time. It's hard to uh, know how this is going to space out. So I'm going to move down to verse 21. 
It says, he who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and will disclose, show myself to him. I told you when we started this book of John, I, I, I love, I love not just reading and, and knowing the book of John, but I love preaching from the book of John because the whole of the gospel is consumed in it. The whole of the gospel is revealed each and every time you open up a page. It's, it's riddled throughout as I was, I was going through and I was, I was starting to pick scriptures and, and different texts and I realized that there's just too much to share. Brothers and sisters, this is the gospel. A few, John 3.16, tells us that God loved you first. So much. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That whosoever, you and I, would believe in him would have everlasting life, would never perish. For God so loved the world. But it takes us to this in John 14. That when we put our faith in him, we, by default, love as he loved. And when we're unable to love as he loved, by default, because he loved us, he sends the Holy Spirit. Again, looking through the book of John, there was so many numerous texts that talked about how the Holy Spirit will reveal Christ to us. How the Holy Spirit doesn't speak of himself, but he speaks of Jesus. How the Holy Spirit will be your comforter. How the Holy Spirit will empower you. Christ said it's necessary that I go away so that the Holy Spirit, another helper, might come. My friends, this God is the creating, loving, giving, empowering God. His mind about you is made up, and the news is good. I want to say that again. Don't know where you're at, don't know what you're going through. I've, I've talked to several of you on the phone. And I know you're struggling. But I want you to hear this. His mind about you is made up. <laughs> he is settled. It's, it's not if you love me. It's because you love me. There is no question. There's no proof required. Because you love me. He knows that you will keep his commandment. He knows that you will love others. Because... You love him. And in agreement with that, he has sent the Holy Spirit to not only indwell in you, but to envelop you, to completely surround you. In this time and moment of confusion, his mind about you is made up. But I guess I want to challenge you today and ask you a very simple question. Is your mind about him made up? It should be. I, I want to ask you to do that today. Today. Make up your mind. Choose today. Decide today. Decide today. But this will be your prayer and your day. That in that, because you love him, you will love well. You see, y'all wondered if I was going to work that word in. Loving God and loving others. That's loving well. Because you love him, 
today. Let's choose to love well. Let's pray together. Father God, we do love you. Master, we thank you. We thank you, God, not just for Jesus, but we thank you for your sweet spirit. God, the helper, the encourager, the sweet spirit, God, that gives us power, the sweet spirit, God, that comforts us in all times. Today, God, we choose as an act of our will to follow you, to be your church, God, to make the way straight by which your son Jesus might come to others. We choose, God, today to demonstrate that love in everything we do, every place we go. So, God, with that, I ask that you bless this, your people, that you guide them and guard them, that you keep them always, God, that you cause their path to be lit by your Spirit, for their heart to be bent towards you, towards others, that in that, God, you will be glorified. We ask it in Jesus' holy name. Amen. God bless you all.